Good evening and welcome to VTV News. I'm Sophie Dong. And I'm Swati Ganesh and for Diana Charlop. The Eskin Library is getting an update. The Eskin family recently donated an astounding $6 million to the Annette and Irwin Eskin Biomedical Library. The money will help support the $12.9 million renovation to the center that will help accommodate the new innovative curriculum of the School of Medicine. The renovation is expected to be complete within 18 months. Upon renovation, the library is expected to be renamed as the Annette and Irwin Family Biomedical Library and Learning Center to support the late Irwin Eskin's passion for training and teaching the next generation of scientists. This new learning space is expected to expand the scope of learning for students of all 10 Vanderbilt schools who visit the library. Vanderbilt had a visitor who incited much reaction among the student body last week. Conservative commentator Milo Yiannopoulos spoke at Vanderbilt last Tuesday as part of his college tour. He shared his thoughts on what would happen if Hillary Clinton fills the potentially vacant Supreme Court seat. If Hillary is elected, she could appoint up to four Supreme Court justices. We do know that her picks are going to, become, are going to come from the regressive left. This is a woman who panders to feminism, panders to the excesses of Black Lives Matter, the race baiting, uh, Black Lives Matter racists in particular. Hillary Clinton's court would trample over the Constitution. The First Amendment is at serious risk in Hillary Clinton, uh, under a Hillary Clinton presidency because of the Hillary Clinton Supreme Court. The Liberal Court will strive to weaken the Second Amendment with the eventual goal of removing it all together. Yes. While Mala Yiannopoulos was speaking, students hosted their own party across the Student Center. Last Tuesday night, over 700 students gathered in the Rand Lounge to counter conservative commentator Milo Yiannopoulos' simultaneous visit to Vanderbilt. When we have people that come to our campus that use their free speech to incite hate, and attack people based on their identity. It's very troubling for people with those identities. And so this event is to show people with these identities and to show each other that we're allies and that we stand with each other in solidarity against people that are here to do nothing more than attack our personhood. Hidden Doors hosted this event as a way to celebrate diversity with food, performances, and other activities. I feel that this event represents exactly what the, um, the direction of where our nation needs to go. Diversity is something I feel that is extremely important to building a society where everyone feels accepted and welcome. And it's also, I feel like, what represents um, the roots of America. A total of 32 campus organizations co-sponsored the event, including Vandy Spoken Word, the Bangadors, and the Vanderbilt Variations. And I think that so many students came out uh, is overwhelming, and the number of students that sponsored the event is also overwhelming. So I want them to know that we support them. Our institution, our administration, administration supports the opportunity to celebrate inclusion. Free speech, and the point of this event is to show love, not hate. So that's what we're using our free speech to do. Despite a lack of big name artists, the annual Lights on the Lawn fundraising concert was successful. The stage was set up for Griffin and Two Friends, the featured artist. The concert also started late due to the scarcity of the initial crowd. Eventually, hundreds of students did show up. They energetically sang and danced along as the entertainers performed their EDM sets. The $40,000 raised from the concert will benefit the Mary Parish Center. It will be used to house victims of sexual and domestic violence in Nashville. Students are preparing for the fast-approaching flu season. On October 11, Vanderbilt faculty, staff, and volunteers helped vaccinate thousands of students at the Flula Plutza event. Flula Plutza began in 2011 as a convenient way to vaccinate students. In its pallet year, it unofficially broke the world record for people vaccinated in an eight-hour time period. The Vanderbilt Occupational Health Clinic puts on the event. Since the flu virus changes each year, doctors associated with flu la Plutza recommend receiving the shot annually. Mostly, they want students to look past common misconceptions and protect themselves and everyone on campus against the flu. This semester saw an opening of the Center for Student Well-Being. What is it for and how is it helping students' well-being? To find out, VTV News senior reporter Chietza Chakura visited the center herself. I'm Rachel Eskridge, the director of the Center for Student Wellbeing. So we really um, found that students were looking for a place to be able to um, 
to really enhance their skills for you know, coping with stress and manage their time and really just overall enhance their, their well-being. Um, Here are the people you are most likely to meet if you go to the Center of Student Well-Being. My name is Janine Peoples and I am one of the Student Well-Being Coordinators at the Center for Student Well-Being. Jason Enrique Steinus and I am one of the Student Well-Being Coordinators here. Hi, I'm Samantha York, the Academic Skills Coach. Hi, my name is Katherine Drodas Cuthbert and I'm a Student Well-Being Coordinator. So we offer several different services at the Center for Student Well-Being. We are available to do individual coaching appointments with students. We also offer workshops in the areas of mindfulness, resilience, um, alcohol and other drug education, um, and a time management workshop. Um, we also have a meditation room and offer meditation classes and yoga classes in that space. Um, and then that, that room is also available for students to use on their own 24-7 with, with their card access. It's, it's worth a try. Come try out a yoga class here. Um, just challenge students to kind of get outside of your comfort zone a little bit and um, come try something new. Thanks, Chietza. This Halloween at Vandy will be a little different compared to Halloweens in the past, as the Westboro Baptist Church is expected to come to Vandy to preach against the university's use of trans pronouns as part of their God Hates Trannies preaching tour. WBC will protest at Vandy from 11.10 to 11.40 a.m. after protesting from 10.30 to 11 a.m. at Belmont. The church will then go on to protest at Out Central, Nashville's LGBT Center. WBC's hateful signs have earned them an infamous name, and their visits to these universities and the LGBT Center will have unfortunate consequences. Vandy's Bicentennial Oak has recently been, recently been recognized as a landmark tree by the Tennessee Urban Forestry Council. This designation is usually given to trees that are, quote, commonly recognized as an established and familiar feature of the community or can be confirmed as a significant part of the community's heritage. The oak is located in front of Central Library and is one of the largest trees on campus. It is more than 200 years old and predates the university itself. Now for this week's sports news, here's VTV sports correspondent Madison Foglio. Hi, I'm Madison Foglio and this is the weekly sports update. Vanderbilt picked up its biggest win in the Derrick Mason era last Saturday, knocking off Georgia 17-16 in Sanford Stadium. It marked the first SEC road win in Mason's three seasons. The Commodores also won in Athens for the first time since 2006. Linebacker Zach Cunningham tackled Georgia's Isaiah McKenzie on the 4th and 1 at the 41 with about one minute remaining to clinch the victory. Over the weekend, the Vanderbilt women's lacrosse team wrapped up their final play day of the fall on a high note beating number 9 Louisville and number 21 Ohio State at the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. The Commodores hope to carry this momentum into their regular season in their home opener against Kennesaw State on February 11th. We hope to see you there. Moving on to soccer, the Commodores soccer team will be playing a conference game against the University of South Carolina on Thursday, October 26th at 7 p.m. This game will mark the second to last game to be played at home. The Commodores hope to recover from their last game as they fell 2-1 last week against Missouri. This week is homecoming weekend at Vanderbilt as the football team will be taking on, at, taking on Tennessee State at Vanderbilt Stadium at 6.30 p.m. Make sure to go show your support at the game as they hope to continue their winning streak from last week. That's all we have this, for this week on sports. For more information about Vanderbilt sports, visit VUCommodore.com. Thanks, Madison. Now for this week's weather, here's VTV weather correspondent Tajira Bonner. Hi, I'm Tajira Bonner and this is your weekly weather forecast. Today, there's a 40% chance of scattered showers throughout the day. All of this may be a bit gloomy, we're all very lucky because this homecoming weekend, we're all in for a treat. With only a 10% chance of precipitation on Saturday, there's a full weekend of fun in the sun. This will carry into the next week, so plan ahead and make some time to spend with your loved ones. This is Tajira Bonner for BTV News. Let's take it to Sophie and Swami. That's all for tonight's broadcast. Thanks for watching BTV News. I'm Sophie Jong. And I'm Swati Ganesh. Tune in next week for more top stories. Mm -hmm.